Today on The Grid, we're talking about working your photographic muscles during a photo walk. And we've got a very, very special guest with us today. Jefferson Graham is here, famous for his photo walks all out on the West Coast. And we also have our co-host. He's a real man. He's got a Florida tan. He eats lots of bran. He's from Curve Like a Stan. It's the real rocket man, Eric Kuna, is here. And we've got some great giveaways, and it all starts in just 30 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. How about no? Hey, <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. Uh, Scott Kelby here. I've got Mr. Kuna over on the other set over there. Hey, everybody. And standing by our good friend Jefferson Graham. So there's Jefferson. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing just great. You're, Thanks for having me. You're beam, beaming in from L.A., is it? Right? Manhattan Beach. Oh, yes. Manhattan Beach. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Well, we're glad to have you here. So for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar with Jefferson, he, he does a series that he's been doing for a while now. And if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me. <coughs> Uh, talk about it and, and mention it and things but uh he does these photo walks where he just goes to places and gives you there it is and and gives you ideas of what to shoot and it's just a lot of fun it's a very it's a very entertaining photo walk and you know how we feel about photo walks around here yeah. we're very big on photo walks so uh he he's he's a, obviously as you can see from these pictures a very very good photographer and uh, he's a very entertaining guy. He uh, wrote a tech column for USA Today for many, many years. And in fact, that's the first time I, I, I met Jefferson was out in LA when I was doing, it was my first Lightroom seminar ever. And we met that day and we had dinner that night. And uh, oh, look at that. You know what else too? He's really good at covering food. He always covers mm -hmm. this, the delis, the yeah, best deli. So Jefferson, what's the best deli in LA right now? The best deli it would be considered Langer's for the number 19 hot pastrami sandwich. <laughs> the, but the best deli photographically is Cantor's. Where's Cantor's? Oh, Cantor's is on Fairfax. It is uh, the second oldest deli in L.A. And is just uh, so much stuff going on in there that is just a feast for photographers. Uh, the hot pastrami is not as good as Langer's. But... <laughs> But it's a better experience. But the Langer's is amazing. Right. As but well. see, this is why I like Jefferson. He gives you the stuff that nobody else gives you. This is you. hard hitting stuff. This right is, there. This is, no, but it's so entertaining. I can yeah. listen to it. And he's got a great radio voice. So his yeah. voice is great. Oh, and yeah. he's, but he's got, I love the, see, now, now I want to go. Next time I'm in LA, I want to go to both of those. I want to mm -hmm. shoot the one and then we go straight over to the other one and eat. Well, I like and how then, you, and, uh, you took and you had one that was, uh, good for the straight up food, but then for us as photographers, this one's better for your photography. We, we can hit them both in the same yeah. day. And uh, the underrated one is Greenblatt's, which is actually the oldest deli in LA and is still closed except for takeout. Really? So it, we don't get the great experience, but it's on Sunset Boulevard and they make a great hot pastrami sandwich and the best chocolate cake I've ever had in my life. Really? Yes. Well, we got to hang with him when we yes. go to L.A. Yeah. <laughs> Jefferson, I go to L.A. Well, I used to go every year, and hopefully I'll be going again here soon. Uh, but uh, we're, well, I'm hanging with you when we come out there. All right. I gotta, we'll, sli we'll slip in a NAM visit as well. Right? Oh, yeah. We'll get it all done. Oh, we'll go to Anaheim. Yeah, we will. Okay, so let me ask you. This is a pop quiz question. What is the deli in downtown L.A. that started the <coughs> – what is – not the Philly cheesesteak. Of course, that would be in Philly. Started the – Prime rib sandwich? What is it? There's a famous sandwich. It's called the uh, uh, French Dip. Yes, and, yes. And it, and it's not a deli. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a restaurant. I, I think of a deli as a Jewish deli, right? Yeah, uh, right. This is a restaurant called da -da 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 -da, Philippe's, the original. I've been there. Over 100 years old. Yeah, I ate there. It was really good. It was a there French dip. That's French right. Dip. The home of the French dip. Yeah. And fantastic. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're right behind Dodger Stadium, and they get quite the crowd in there yeah, it for, was for crazy. baseball games. It was crazy just on a Thursday. Like, I was doing my seminar, and I went over there. Somebody told me about it and said, hey, this place invented it. But that's not really what we're here to talk about, though I love to talk about food. We're going to— so How about chicken sandwiches? Yeah, oh, for real. yes, the chicken sandwich wars. <laughs> 
So yeah. my, my wife so tried still, to pull... still the sick and sandwich wars, you still have kind of Zaxby's up there. Oh, yeah. Pop, and yeah. you know what? I've gone back to each one of them just because Terry White is always challenging me on this. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you. So I went, I had to go back to KFC and I had to go back to Burger King. I had to go back to all of them yeah. except for Wendy's, which is trash. And I like Wendy's, which is bad because I think Wendy's is, makes a great hamburger. But man, their chicken sandwich. It's not even in the war. It's like, yeah. forget it. But uh, yeah, Zaxby's, hands down. All right. Dude, Zach, and now Zaxby's is, there's 400 Zaxby's, but there are none in California. They, right. are, they are in Utah, is as close as they get. But they're, they're, their chain is growing like mad. And the, that chicken sandwich is not. There you go. So, you know, hey, Jefferson, when you go to the restaurant, everything's about the chicken sandwich wars. And all of the staff are wearing camo. They're dressed <laughs> like military. They got military caps. I'm like, Man, they're taking this serious. They went all in. <laughs> they went all in. All right. Well, it was one of my favorite articles that you wrote because it was just so funny when you said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not writing about Lightroom. I'm not writing about Photoshop. I'm writing about chicken sandwiches. I know this is a photographer blog, but photographers get hungry too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was desperate for some reason to uh, to share this because so, so Terry White, I talk to Terry like every day. He's like my best buddy, and we we talk about stuff like this in earnest. And that's why I was like, okay, dude, we're gonna try this. So Terry's going, and he's trying each one. I'm trying each one, and and we're both down to Zaxby's. We're like Popeyes yeah. is really good, but it's, it's Zaxby's and Popeyes, and Popeyes right? Hands down, yeah. yeah. It's like they're both so so good. Uh, but today we're go. talking. Actually, that's about, not what we're talking about today. That's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> but on a photo walk, sometimes it's nice to get a chicken sandwich. So uh, I yeah. plan my chicken sam my my things based around where a Zaxby's location is. Mm -hmm. All right. So last year I did Chicago. That was my photo walk last. Well, Eric and oh, I went year before was, last. It was year before last. Yeah, year before yeah. last I I did Chicago, and before that I was doing all European cities, and so. I want to go back. I want to do, Eric and I were supposed to go to Switzerland. Yeah. No, it's always no been that. on the bucket list. But I, I think, I don't think that people that haven't done a photo walk don't realize the value of a photo oh, walk. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, it, there's, there's so many aspects of it that I think that are great for photographers. And we talked about kind of, you know, uh, stretching your muscles or building your muscles, your photography muscles through photo walks. Uh, so if think about it, what is street photography today? It's, it's a photo walk. You're walking around, you're taking pictures in a city and you don't see much of street photography like out in the country. No, <laughs> it's, it's always like in a very populated area. Jefferson, can I, you're out in, in the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area. Can I tell you one of my favorite places to, to, to photo walk? There's two places. Yeah. Number one, Venice beach. Mm -hmm. I, Venice Beach is the wildest place, the wildest, coolest people that are there. You've got Muscle Beach there where these guys <coughs> with, with muscles that are, and this is going to be hard for many of you to believe, larger than Eric's because Eric is <laughs> shockingly muscular under his shirt. Anyway, yep. uh, but you have these incredible, like, they look like a different species. I'm looking at myself. I look at them like something's wrong here because these guys look awesome. <laughs> and they're, and there's just so it's like a cast of characters. It's just, it's a show every day i think that in yeah, los is angeles entertainment. is is got to be one of the best places the other one is koreatown which is almost downtown-ish kind of isn't it great uh, jefferson it's downtown. It? Yeah. yeah it's kind of downtown and it's a very interesting it's like a town inside a town it's very very interesting but it's not your typical it's not right. like a typical chinatown it has its own flavor and its own feel um, so those are those are a couple of places that I love out in, in your in your area. Um, okay, well, so let me jump in. First thing is we need to do some quick plugs. Okay. Okay. So I have a, a new class on Kelby One Ooh. on the best places to shoot in LA. Mm -hmm. So let's not forget about that. Right. Yeah. Everybody should check that out. And then I I have my series my photo walk series on Tubi, which is a free streaming TV app. And uh, Kelby One we talk about cameras. On Tubi, we talk about smartphones, and that, that's sort of the difference between the two. Ah. But the overall, uh, the overall theme is get out and get out of the car and open up your camera eyes because you see some pretty great things when you stop zooming up. The I'm Jefferson Grant. Uh, case in point, Venice. 
Venice is as wild as Scott just said. It is a show. Um, unfortunately, since the pandemic, it's been hit badly with um, homeless, uh, have just sort of taken over half of the space. It's not as much fun as it was, but there's still some great, great times to be had there. Um, and there's lots of characters. It's the, uh, probably the number one people watching spot in Los Angeles would be Venice Beach. Yeah, I'd, so, I'd, I'd have to agree. <laughs> it's yeah, it's wild. Um, San, Santa Monica Pier, which is right up the road, yeah. is also great for that as well. And um, you know, you, you could hit both of them on your feet. Koreatown, I'm not as um, not as up on, but I'd say anywhere in mid LA is always great. And by the way, great bagels near Koreatown. You you need to know that the best bagels in the world. <laughs> All right. No. Yeah, when we filmed a uh, couple one class out there with Jeremy Cowart in Venice Beach. Oh, that's right. We did Beach. a yeah. we did a great class. Now, yeah. now Jeremy Cowart's class uh, was a portrait class. Yes, he was like making portraits out on the street. But but he would make portraits in places you never thought that you're like, how is he going to do this? And he comes up with gold. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, they have these bathrooms out at Venice Beach. I've and, been there, and they're yeah, <laughs> they're kind of like deco bathrooms. You can't believe the stuff he got out of those bathrooms. That sounds terrible, but it, it, it does. Uh, but the shots are amazing. I mean, he is—he's got a gift. He really does. I, I, can't I don't know he got if you're familiar bathrooms. with Jeremy Coward, but he, so he's, was he doing portraits in the bathroom? Uh, outside the bathroom. Outside. But, the bathroom. but what, the way he cropped and framed everything, you could do a contest and say, "Where was this taken?" And no one would ever guess bathroom. It's it's just he did a brilliant job and he would he would take nothing. Oh, yeah. He'd go, let's look at this stupid wall over here and he'd come away with a thing. It looked like you built it in a studio. I, I don't he just has a, a, a magical gift for 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 portrait well, photography for the for the people who are not going to shoot in the outside the bathroom. Uh, some other great spots <laughs> there it would be anywhere up and down Oceanfront Walk, which is the, uh, the the you know, the people photography place where you just get all these characters, whether they're selling you a, they're giving you a CD and then asking you for a donation. Whether they're doing street performing, uh, some of the best uh, acrobats are out there. They're pretty amazing. And then write this down, Hotel Irwin, E-R-W-I-N. They have a little lounge on the fourth floor. It's a rooftop, rooftop deck. It gives you a great view for overhead shots oh, without, that, without flying a drone. That right? would be good. Hotel Irwin, E-R-W-I-N. Yeah, and you could over you, you, on one side you have the Venice Pier, on the other side you have the murals, on another side you have all the people walking up and down the street. All right, four, Jeff, I, it, the, and it opens up at four every day. I have a question for you about yes. shooting street performers and stuff, but but um, what, what, in just a second, I do we have a trailer? Do we have a trailer of of, of his class? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Show it oh. Okay, so in a minute, we're going to take a, a pause here, and we're going to actually show the trailer for your Where to Shoot in Los Angeles class. But I want to ask you a question about this, Jeff, because I, how, do you, how do you handle, you want to, there's a guy playing guitar on the beach, and you want to photograph him. There are all kinds of schools of thought, like, well, I don't want to give him a tip, or I don't, you know. Uh, what are your feelings about paying to get people on the street to pose for you? Uh, you tip. If they're yeah. out there with a hat out, you tip, and it's just the way it is. Um, uh, you know, I was in Las Vegas recently, and two showgirls, I posed with them, and they told me $20 a piece, and that's the way it is. And uh, <laughs> the, there's a pianist who, who performs out on um, Oceanfront Walk, and he yeah. demands money, and, you know, it, it's fine. I mean, I've got some great shots of some of these people uh, for $5, and I'm happy to pay it. Yeah, this is I, how they make a living. Yeah, and and... I, I, I don't know about you, but what I generally do is I tip them first. Like I go up and they're yeah. playing and I tip them first. And then I'll ask them, like, is it okay if I take a picture? And once you've tipped, they're yeah, like, they're yeah, like, yeah oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. But if yeah. you just go up and start shooting pictures, it doesn't seem like it goes very well. No, no, it doesn't. But I will say that in Venice, I told you these acrobats and they're flying. They are just flying doing these jumps. Well, you don't have to really interact with them. You're just going to snap the photo right. because there's no time to talk to them as they do these amazing stunts. Wow. It'd be nice if you could get low and just put the sky yeah. behind them. Oh, yeah. Maybe use the platypod, huh? 
Yeah. Ooh, the platypod would be perfect for yeah, that. With that articulating screen. With the articulating screen, yes. Yeah. Eric and I are very big on the articulating screen. Hey, what? by, by the way, uh, what camera are you shooting right now for your uh, your non-iPhone camera? Uh, Sony a7 III oh, and the RX10 nice. IV. Okay. All right. I didn't didn't realize that you were you were shooting Sony. So yeah. we're going to have to end this interview. So no, uh -huh. I'm, yeah. I'm totally, <laughs> totally kidding. We, we really don't care. We just we want everybody yeah, to they have all fun. take pictures. They all take great pictures. Trust right? me, your iPhones are pretty good. <laughs> Canons, they all take great pictures. And if I wasn't this, shooting Nikon or Canon, I'd be shooting Sony. It's not a yeah, you know, it's not a thing. I shoot my yeah, iPhone. The Sony more lenses are really sharp. Yeah. yeah. And Sony cameras. <laughs> I don't know anybody that has a Sony camera except for Jason. That, uh, uh, Jason got rid of his. Jason sold just, his. Just saying. So we did an air he, he show. Was, he was fighting with it so much, he sold it. Literally. <laughs> we were doing an air show. We shot an air show last weekend here in Florida. And Jason was there. And he was so upset with his camera that he literally sold it. He sold it. We came home and he sold his, his camera to some yeah. used used camera store. Yeah. And what's he, like, what's he getting in his place? I, we don't know. He's he still... Just told me. Oh, he's yeah. gonna see. All right, he says he's, he's gonna get he was, another He's Sony. between the Canon and the Sony. He said he decided. Okay. He decided. So, Sony traditionally is a better camera for video. Oh yeah, yeah. Sony makes great camera for video. Right, hey, yeah. you know what though? There, so Jeff, there's a big thing that we tell people, <laughs> is like if you're gonna buy a camera, buy the camera your friends have. Amen. Can I tell you how many times Eric and I have been shooting and like, Eric, do you have a fish eye? And Eric, by the way, Jeff carries everything he carries the biggest backpack it's actually <laughs> larger than him it is a bigger backpack. it's, it's, it's usually it's because scott needs something <laughs> it could be but 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 when you yeah. have buddies that have the same camera brand it's you're so like yeah true. let's use so this true. lens let's use this filter i got all the different stuff batteries right? But uh, like if Jason anything. and I go shooting and Jason's like, oh, man, I need a longer lens. I can't go. Oh, here. I'm like, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, sorry. Ooh. And then Eric will be there beside me and Eric and I are trading lenses. <laughs> Ooh, you know, so I always say get the get get the, yep. the camera that your friends have. But, you know, absolutely. Actually, Jason has no friends. So it's <laughs> oh, oh, Joey, I'm kidding. Kidding. No, no but I, I mean, I can 100 percent echo that. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. And saying that same thing, it's like you know, don't uh, be caught up in this like brand war and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it really, at the end of the day, again, your iPhone will take incredible pictures. Your your cell phone, your Samsung sure. phone, it will take incredible pictures. But it's all the stuff that comes along with it. That if your friend has this stuff, and you can, especially if you're getting into it, finding out what your friends shoot. And seeing what you can then borrow or just be out with them shooting and they'll know the same settings. It happens all the time. I'll be out and, you know, somebody's shooting a Sony next to me and asking me how to, like, make this picture or do these yeah. settings. How I'm like, I can't on help HDR. you. Oh, I can't uh, help you. I'd have to Google it. Or, like, Jeff, what happens to me is this. Hey, Eric, do you have an extra battery? <laughs> that happened three times two weeks ago. Really? <laughs> Three times. That doesn't need to be brought up. <laughs> All right. So, Jeff, when you're when you're out shooting, I, I find that one of the things I like best is that you learn about other stuff. Like you learn yeah. about, like I learned about the strap that I use to this day for my very first photo walk. You know how many years ago that was? This is 13 years ago? Yeah. I'm using the same camera. What's your camera strap, Jeff? What do you use? Uh, Black Rapid. That's what I use. That's one I use now. I use the the classic Black Rapid, which is the and very I use first the Black one. Rapid as so well. they made it for years, then they stopped making it, and then they brought it back, and that's exactly the one I have. Jeff, is that the best strap? It is the best. It is the, the current best. version. the The earlier version, I was standing at the Manhattan Beach Pier, just minding my business, <laughs> and my camera collapsed and fell on the ground because the <gasps> strap broke. Is that your worst nightmare? That is everyone's yeah, is. worst nightmare, yeah. Yeah, wow. and then they told me the new ones are more secure and they're better. Yeah, I've never had that issue, uh, yeah. but I'm, of course I'm using one of the newer classics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what else I like about it, which Eric's going to think this is not true, but it is. It has a battery holder on the, and I had a battery in there. <laughs> Eric and he I did at one point. He borrowed a battery, and then he realized he had a battery in there. Yeah, it, you have a now, Scott. Yeah. The my Sony batteries never run out. I know. I mean, they last for eight to ten hours. I know. Yeah, <laughs> unless you're shooting video, and then it's an hour. Then it's five seconds. Yes, yeah, so then it's ten no, seconds. No, seriously, do your Sony batteries last like a ridiculous long time. Yeah, all the, the entire day. Yeah. 
Really? Now, yeah. now, if I'm shooting my 1DX. Yeah, that thing will last that thing three will last. days. I shoot football games for three and a half hours. and it's a, You don't even see the little thing move. Yeah, no. That's a, but, and really, honestly, um, the, the Canon batteries last forever when they are fully charged. Um, sometimes when we go shooting, our batteries aren't fully charged. Do you notice how he says, that, he says that with a smirk? I found that when I shot Canon, they would last all day, unless yes. I shot video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so again, it goes back to this brand wars thing. It's all bupkis, and at the end of the day, they're cameras. All right, we're going to take a short one. <laughs> we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to get to see the trailer uh, for, I have not seen this yet. Uh, Eric saw it and said it's awesome, but I haven't seen it yet. But uh, we're, I'm going to watch it with you right now. So it's stick around. Yeah, it's I'm on sorry. the second oh, break. Oh, it's not on this break. It's on the second break. So all the more reason to stick around. Wait. So uh, what we do have coming up, are we going to, are we going to have, do we have a teaser for the outdoor conference? It's we like have a only... teaser, but we don't have uh, the official uh, life. Yeah. Okay. So we're about four weeks away. Uh, three weeks. Three weeks away from the outdoor photography conference. So there's that. We'll see you guys in just a second. Don't go away. I'm Jefferson Graham. I'm a Los Angeles writer, photographer, a former USA Today tech columnist, and I've got a great new class for you on Kelby One. I'll show you where all the best spots are to get your iconic LA shots so you won't be scrambling to find them when you get here. We'll cover epic travel and street photography, awesome sunsets, do some time lapses and panoramas, and I'll show you how to get amazing photos of the city that, of course, gave birth to the motion picture industry. Then we'll look up at the amazing palm trees of Beverly Hills 90210, catch the top spots for the LA skyline, movie locations, a killer freeway shot, and of course, we'll be ending at the beach for what I hope will be a memorable sunset. Ready to get started? We're in LA, the birthplace of the movie, so you know what they say. Action! For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. Top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit borisfex.com, add Optics to your cart and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. All right. Hey, we are back. And uh, so we did show you that we thought it was going to be on the second yeah, break. But, but it was there. But Jason's on the he's on the on the on the mark in the control room. And he was like, I'll let you ahead and see it now. And uh, first off, we were saying this on the break. Man, your 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 video stuff is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're great. great. You're a great still photographer, but I'm always impressed with with when still photographers can do video because it's you usually can do A or B. You can't do both. So, but uh, I want to talk to you about a couple of locations you shared there. I, I guess you you yeah. you talk about the Griffin Observatory. Griffith Observatory. Oh, it's Griffith. Sorry, I it's say. Griffith. It is like 500 acres. Uh, a park that was left by a man named Griffith Griffith to the city of Los Angeles. It is just unbelievable. Uh, it's just so vast. And this observatory sits on the hill with the city glistening lights behind it. It's one of my favorite spots in L.A. It's hard to get to. It's so popular. They've done everything to encourage encourage people not to come in their car and so you could get there on a busy day and have to walk two miles up the road because <gasps> that's the only place you could park and you know i'm sure you've talked about this on the show before but when's the best time to go 
how about early in the morning before anybody yeah. shows up, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll have parking. There will Not be only that. So it's tourists. free parking Monday through Friday till 12. After 12, it's 15 bucks an hour. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So, and for me to get the shot that you saw, that's an hour walk easily. There's, there's two walks. One is to go on the side of the building, which takes about an hour to get to because the shrubbery would, will block your shot otherwise. So you have to go to the side or walk all the way up the hill. And that also takes an hour and then you're looking down. Both shots are great. Both are amazing hikes. Uh, but, you know, if I park at 10 o'clock, I don't know that I'll be back by 12. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. Wow. Now, you have a great view of the Hollywood sign from up there, if I remember right. I've only been there one time. I went shooting with my buddy Mike Cabasi. Do you know Mike Cabasi? I don't know him. Oh, we got to get you uh, hooked up with Mike. So Mike is the official show photographer for every NC NCIS has ever been. And he's always working on five or six different TV shows out there. And he's a Kelby One instructor, so he's one of your colleagues. And okay. he's a really cool guy, and he's just a lot of fun. But anyway, he's a, he likes photography like we do, just like it is his job. I mean, he, he is the sh but he likes to do it outside of just his job. Because right. there are people that when they do a nine to five job of photography, that's the last thing they want to do afterwards. Yeah, just go out and like, right. But Mike, Mike's yeah. all all about it. So uh, yeah, he took me up there, and we had, we had a really great time. Uh, but, well, there's there's several different ways to get there. So were you mm -hmm. looking straight at the sign, or were you behind the sign? We were looking straight at it. We were not behind the sign. Okay. So uh, th th there's a really long hike from Griffith uh, Observatory, which I would not recommend because it takes so long to get there. But y there is a residential neighborhood that you can park in, again, Monday through Friday, not on Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, friends, you might consider taking an Uber or Lyft there, uh, and they'll just drop you off. And then you, you can go in front of the sign, which is great and then take a walk, which will take about an hour to two uphill. It's one mile, and then you get to go behind the sign. And if you're really cool on a cool night, you'll have the glistening lights Ooh. and the colors changing, and it's just an awesome place. The only problem is that awful fence that's behind the letters. And there's basically not much you can do, except we, we brought a, I, I came with my friend, Sean, we had a, 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 a big massive tripod and then we put a platypod on top of the tripod to try to go even higher. That's how we shot the uh, time lapse. Um, and, or you could fly a drone, but it's illegal up there. That hasn't stopped others, <laughs> but uh, you could get a hell of a shot from a drone. Okay, Jefferson, where is it not illegal to fly a drone anymore? Uh, there's a few spots. It, there's not many left. I'm like telling your you, I'm own stunned. Private it. property up like, to 500 feet. Yeah, you have to. Go. I was just at, at Zion National Park in Utah. Speaking of Utah, and you can't fly in the park, but you can fly yeah. outside of the park. I don't think you so can fly, fly in any national park. parks now. I think all no, the national parks are are no drone no zones. No drone zones. Right. And uh, everywhere I go, like if you go in Europe, everywhere you go now, there's a picture of a drone and a big no. And yeah. just a few years ago, that was not the case. But you know, you no, gotta... I did fly it. I did fly it in Portugal. I found some square where I could pull it off, and I said, "There's nobody here. It's good. I'm going to make this work." And I went up, and every seagull in town came by, say hi. Oh, it was very scary. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, well, let's, let's talk about the the Hollywood sign because you can take pictures of it. Yes. Right. But it's kind of like it's uh, the the. Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce licensed it for commercial use. So if you want to put it in an advertisement, right? So if you're like Microsoft or a movie. Yeah, or you want a movie want in the back, or uh, they, entertainment purposes. Right. But or... there's all kinds of fair uses of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's, it's, it's, a, it's a sticky situation. It's a lot of, kind of like shooting the Eiffel Tower. There's certain times. Well, I think the Eiffel Tower. Well, well, first of all, I don't know how seriously the chamber pursues this. I mean, they were they were roasted by the L.A. Times, the local paper, for not having a leg to stand on, and for trying to do this. So, I, I don't know how often they go after people. Yeah. It's in a it's in a public street. It's in a public park. It is you know it's right there, and it's like saying you can't take a picture of a building. A building is copyrighted. I don't know how seriously any of this is taken.
Yeah. Now I know that in France they protect that Eiffel Tower. Well, the light Eiffel show. Tower light show. Light it's show. It's, while the light show is going on, yeah. it can shoot it at night. But the minute the light show comes yeah, on, on the top it's of the like hour, different right. different laws. Now there are some buildings like in New York the that they iron. fiercely the Flatiron Building yeah. is a big one that they fiercely protect. Uh, the another one is the Guggenheim. The exterior of the Guggenheim Museum yes. is another one they fiercely protect. But anyway, you can still take pictures of all this stuff. You can share it on Facebook, and there's yeah, all kinds and, of and things. Yeah, and you, you can use can it at editorial use, um, oh, yeah, there's fair all kinds use, of, like rights. But it's when you get into commercial and like licensing or one. Yeah, like the, if you wanted you know, to use the Hollywood sign in an <laughs> ad for Exxon, you're yeah. going to be paying a licensing fee. Right. <laughs> Right. I did find it interesting that all the stock agencies had plenty of pictures of the Hollywood sign. Uh, so they're usually pretty adamant about oh, yeah. not taking things that are copyrighted, yeah. but they have Yeah, but most, uh, most I, I know this with the Hollywood sign that, like, for example, XW Stock, um, they only allow it to be used for editorial use. And that's because of this licensing problem yeah. that you can use it, but then you fall into the editorial. Is it educational purposes? Is it newsworthy? Is it, is it something yeah. like that? Because if it yeah. isn't and you're using it outside of that, I think companies don't even want to touch yeah. it. And yeah, but can... then what, it, what is editorial use? Okay, so exactly. uh, let, let's talk about that, that because I, I read that in documentaries is considered editorial use. Yeah, exactly. So basically you're talking everything but commercial advertising. Correct. Yeah. That's really when you get down to it. Yeah. The only thing is like you said, like if, I said, if, if Walmart wants to Disney use. wants to use yeah. the Hollywood sign in an ad for one of their movies, like, okay, this is squarely commercial use. And that's yeah. to your point is like, yeah. there's such a gray area there that only certain people could ever get um, like the hammer thrown down on them. Yeah. Hey, I, I want to get back to talking about uh, photo walks, but we, we have some folks to say hi to real quick. So Mr. Kuhn is going to give a couple yeah, of quick yeah. shout outs. So we got uh, Steve Bauer saying hi from up there from Panama City, Florida. Uh, Marianne, Marianna Lundford over there from London, England. We've got Barry from Oregon join us, David from Sweden. Kathleen from Idaho. Then we got Dax from Austin, Texas. We got JP Zil Sylvan joining us from Finland. Um, and then James uh, from Sweden. Uh, Flash from Maryland. Bay from oh, Loxahatchee, La 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 Florida. Um, then we got Kissy, I believe, uh, from Romania. We've got Jim from sunny Key West, Florida, Shell from Texas. We got Janice. We got people all over the world. There you go. So, yep. And Rhea, Rhea from, from the Netherlands, Netherlands as all well. Right. So, well, glad yeah. to have you guys here. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're talking about photo walks today. And, and, and I was started down this path a little while ago is I don't think that people realize how much you get from a photo well, and, walk. And, and you know, one thing we haven't talked about, and I, I know how much you get from a photo walk, but what is a photo walk? Because we've been doing photo walks. I think we take it for granted that we've been doing yeah. photo walks forever. You uh, started the worldwide photo walk, what, uh, 13 years ago we started doing yeah. that. What is a photo walk? Well, I'll, I'll give uh, Jefferson's got Go ahead, himself. Scott, Scott, give your version, uh, I'll, I'll give it mine. Okay, so yeah, because yeah, ours are different. So the, the, when we do a, a photo walk, it's a large group of photographers going out together as a group, and it is a social event. So you're basically, I'm around other photographers, we're all going to take pictures, we're going to wind up at like a bar or a restaurant at the end, where we're going to chat <coughs> and make friends. It is a meet people, have fun, social kind of event wrapped around photography. In a location. Right, and that's very different than I think what Jefferson's Yep. is view of it because there's all many views that it's not like ours is right and his is wrong they're just there are yes. different kinds of photo walks jeff okay okay so first of all i've been doing some live photo walks that are not on video i have one coming up on may 6th and one on may 10th okay may 6th is in manhattan beach and may 10th is on catalina island and what i say to people is it's a fun experience we're just getting together making new friends and seeing the world together and going out and taking pictures. I'm not, a te I'm not teaching anything, but if you have any questions, I'll be ha happy to answer. Uh, we're just, it's a, a, as you say, Scott, it's a social experience. And the high point is always getting together afterwards for lunch, dinner, drinks, whatever. Yeah, it really That's, is. Yeah. And, and, um, and what's interesting is this, the one I'm doing in Manhattan Beach is the third one I've done in like in a year. And 70% uh, of the people who are signing up are repeats. 
they just it's they they like getting together again. I mean, they're, they're seeing the same sites, but it's just a social experience right. that we should have more of. And I think people really, really miss from a year of staying inside. Oh yeah, and I think that. But I think what you just said, Jeff, is what what people don't realize about these photo walks is it, number one how important the get together at the end is, right? Because you're you're walking down the street and you're looking. I find it, number one, photographically, and I'm the same way on my photo walks. I'm not teaching. I'm just walking with you. We're hanging out. And if you ask me a question, of course, I'll be happy to answer it. But same thing as you, Jeff. I'm just walking. I'm having fun. But I love seeing what other people are photographing. You're all yeah. in the same place, moving through the same space. Mm -hmm. And you'll see someone shooting something way up here, someone getting down low and all. And I, I love to see the creativity the different things that people are shooting in the same place that I would never think to shoot. And this is where I think it stretches your photographic muscle is not by so much what you're going to shoot, but by seeing people in the same location, getting entirely different photographs than you're going to get. And sometimes yours will be better. And sometimes theirs will be better. I've had people on my photo walks out shoot me to death. I mean, they're just, they, they, they're looking for different things and they're seeing different things and all, but, but it is, it's, I think it's great to see 20, 40, 50 people all in the same spot, all aiming their cameras in a different direction. And even, even if it's five people, six people, you know, oh, yeah. smaller groups too, it's the same thing. Um, you know, cause I've been on photo walks where it's been way smaller than that. And um, it is, it's just that it's that social gathering. And I'm like you, I'd love to see how other people see the same world that I'm experiencing. So we're walking down the same street and then afterwards you get to see is like, I didn't even see that. Or then people will see your photos and go, wow, I didn't see that. You know, and it gets you kind of looking at all these different perspectives of, of a city and, and um, really starts exercising your brain into looking, looking for photos rather than just just aimlessly kind of snapping photos. Yeah. Am right. I, so I, oh, I've shot ahead, the Manhattan Jeff. Beach Pier a million times, and then on my photo walk, someone's doing it from a different direction yeah. that I never thought of. Yeah. Right? But, exactly. But that's, that's what it's about. Yep. And, but also, some of those, like Eric said, some of the smaller photo walks, like I'll see in the worldwide photo walk, you know, we have a limit of 50. 50 is the maximum for any one city. You'll see walks with three and four people. But then you'll read their write-ups about it, and they had a fantastic time. Like, small groups can be really, really great. Five or six people, it doesn't need 50. Because mm -hmm. at 50, you barely get to meet everybody, right? There's 50 people. Yep. It's a two-hour walk. How long do you do your walks, Jeff? Um, it would be an hour and a half. Hour and a half? It's probably better as an hour and a half. But I, I do two hours so we can cover some territory and get well, to my, a restaurant. My, yeah, my one in Catalina is going to be two hours because we're going to start at 10 and then have lunch at 12. Yeah. Right? That's generally yeah. what I do, too. I, I generally start and, and we end mm -hmm. around 12. So I start at 10 in the morning. And, you know, we did we did Lisbon. Uh, we, we got to do uh, our, a photo walk in Lisbon in Portugal. And that was that was wonderful. And I had to have a good friend that lives there. So that was that made it even better. He knew helped me plan the route like I didn't know where to go in Lisbon. You're going to another place and you don't know, which is why your series is so great. Can, t can you tell us a little bit about the series that you've been doing all these years about the, yes. about the photo walks? Yes, okay, so on, on the series, I'm taking people on a photo walk, on a, on a video photo walk, showing them around to some great place, and hopefully meeting up with a local photographer who will know the area better than I, and we're going to explore it together. So I, I, um, in Porto, in Porto, Portugal, I met up with the great Jose Manuel Santos, who, Scott, I think you know. Sure. Uh, and he showed us uh, his his take on hidden Porto, uh, places that I, I was not going to be able to parachute in and know about. So that was great. It was eye-opening. I also met uh, street performers, and I interviewed them, and uh, uh, that was just eye-opening, just talking to them as well. So I like to meet the local people and talk to them and go around with the other photographers. Uh, what do I have coming up? Um, I just did, oh, in Vegas. I just did Las Vegas um, with uh, a, a man named Homer Lewag, who is David Copperfield's photographer, and he is oh. amazing. And wow. we went, went uh, all through the desert uh, uh, seeing the world through his eyes, which is basically what a photo walk is, is you're seeing the world through someone else's eyes, hopefully, right? Yeah, no, that's great. And your series is so well done. Uh, I mean, 
it's 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 produced at a, at yeah, a documentary great. level. So thank you. You, you, mm -hmm. you do a great available job. for free on Tubi. T U B I. T U B I. I'm not, are you familiar with Tubi? Not really. No. Well, you tell them. It's uh, if you have. Do you guys have Roku or Amazon Fire Stick or Apple TV? I have oh, Apple yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's there. Just download the I app. I gotta download the app. Tubi. All right. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Let me write this down. I gotta put it right next to the Hotel Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I actually do. So you know what it is? I when I go to some place, and I do try to do some research first. Now Eric is the king of research. I feel like I'm the prince or the duke of research, but Eric <laughs> is the king of research because Eric. He, he goes to that next level. I'm like, oh, great. Well, we'll go here. And Eric's like, well, do you know if you go to this GPS <laughs> the coordinates that there's a... There's that just an, happened to me last week. There's an old goat up at the top of there that will lead you up. He pulls you up the path. And then he always has this weird stuff. Yeah. But, Found an old uh, external fuel tank for the space shuttle. Yeah. Abandoned in... in oh, uh, oh, can, can in, we stop uh, for a second? <laughs> can we see some pictures? Can you show us? So Eric somehow... In his weird world of Ericness, found an abandoned s shuttle. What is it's it? A, it's this. It's the space shuttle external tanker. What held the hydrogen fuel while the space shuttle was launching? That big red fuel on tanker thing, on the on back. The side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it falls off. Yep, yep. And you found one. And I found one. Uh, yeah. So here, let me That's get connected. Up. They're going to be like. Uh, All right. While you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to talk to keep talking. Yeah, to yeah. Jeff. So. I, I, so what we're doing today, Jeff, where I'm talking to you and you're going, go to this deli, get this cake, go shoot it at, at uh, Hotel five, Irwin. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. But, but, oh, and that tip about the, the, the Griffith Observatory, the, the, that's the kind of stuff that I think is gold. The, all of the food, the locations, everything. And sometimes it's just something to see in a location that's not photo. It's not great to photograph, but it's interesting. But I'm telling you what, connections like, you know, you meeting up with Fernando and stuff like that, these connections that, that know the area, it's so great. That's why, of course, your, your photo walks are so wonderful, because if you're going to, to Las Vegas and you're like, I don't want to just shoot the strip again. I don't need to shoot MGM Grand. It's, it's green. Look. Uh, and yeah. you're looking for something different. That's why your series, I think, is so popular and why people love it. Now, it's very entertaining and interesting and all that stuff, but also, you're kind of getting insider tips and stuff like just like the stuff we've been talking about today well and that's that's I think everything that's what's so great about it is getting and 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 i find that you know if you find if you're interested in it um other photographers in their area like they're really passionate about their area you know so right. the you know if i live in uh, portland oregon and i'm a photographer there like i know these secret places that nobody else knows and i'm willing to share because I want to share that experience of my town, you know. So there's that side of it that you know people just want to share experiences with. Well, that's interesting, other. Eric, that you bring up Portland. If I went to Portland, where would I be getting my donuts at? Voodoo. Yes. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Voodoo donuts. It always comes back to food. It does. It always. Comes you know back why? To food. Because, and this is a proven fact. <laughs> this, proven this, fact. No, seriously, all photographers eat food. They do. All of them. And they, and they like chicken sandwiches, they too. They love chicken sandwiches. The bigger, the crunchier, the better. <laughs> Voodoo Donuts. You've been there, obviously. Obviously, yes. Incredible. <laughs> Line around the block. Like, you, you have to try to find what, what time can I go there where there's not 100 people in line. But I'm telling you what, it's like Garrett's Popcorn in Chicago. It's worth the wait. All and right. where's the best deep dish pizza in Chicago? It's, you're not going to say Grim, Grimaldi, not Grimaldi's. Um, I always like Douay's. Oh, I've never had Douay's. That was I, I like that. But, right. uh, I, I think I have a Chicago trip coming <coughs> up to see my buddy Paul. Hey, Paul! Uh, and we're gonna. Oh, okay. We got Eric. All right. Here's. Uh, so yeah, that was the that that is just sitting in the port in and there's a port in um, Jacksonville where there's this old space shuttle tank uh, just sitting there, um, just abandoned. Been there for decades, um, just sitting there. So got to shoot it from a few different angles. Okay, with that's, the... that's not a good angle right there. Yeah. No, but you got some nice stars going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, and then got some uh, some time lapses of it. So going across. That's the uh, second oh, stage. Look at it go. Wow. Um, 
going up into the sky, and then it's going to be lit up by the sun here. So the sun's lighting it up, uh, even though I'm in shadow, because it's getting into that twilight time. So you can actually see it lit up, and then here's a faster version of it. This uh, is amazing, Eric. Yeah, thanks. And so then, how yeah. long were you standing there for this shot? Is this an hour, two hours, six hours? Uh, that right there, that time lapse is condensed down from about eight minutes. So that's eight minutes. Yeah, but, but you're, you, you got that whole shot by standing there for eight minutes? Um, yeah, this one where it's streaking across, yes, that's eight minutes. Wow. Yeah. Well, rockets so, are fast. Yeah, they're very fast. I mean, that's what, this is, um, this is, yeah, that's, that's condensing the whole launch down into basically a few seconds. So the eight minute. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah. A video. And then, and then here's like other shots that like, this is the first stage going into orbit. I started doing some slow shutter panning. Uh, so taking the techniques that we use in aviation photography, applying again to rocket photography, I can able to streak the trail uh, of the stars but not streak the rocket because the rocket's moving very fast. Um, same thing here. Um, this is the rocket going into um, That's a cool orbit. Shot. So you, you actually have the that's rocket up cool. here. Um, and then down here is actually, that's the second stage or the first stage returning to Earth to uh, land on the drone ship. And again, been experimenting with, I'm slow shutter panning with the motion and then freezing the, the motion of the rockets going, but then trailing the stars. So just interesting stuff. Oh, these are uh, so really you, good. So you come into work every day and, and work a, f a regular shift, and then you're out shooting stars all night long. And yes. no sleep, right? Yes, yeah. that's, what, that's the game. You know what I love? I love when you're in the morning and you see Eric come by the clock and, and he puts his card in. So yeah, his yeah. time card, yeah. his time sheet. You know. So there's, there's an example. Actually, I did a... a, a, a um, uh, diagram. That's what you got. So you got the second stage is the one uh, admitting the light over to the left there. You got the first stage that returning to land. And then on top of that is four astronauts flying to the International Space Station. Sc screaming their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. What lens are you using, Eric? So Did that's a 400 millimeter right there. So 400 With millimeter an extender? Cannon. With and an then, extender? Uh, that's a, uh, on a, an old 1DX. That's is a 1DX. Extender? Just no, asking. no, no, no. Straight, just 400 millimeters. Hey Jeff, those are pretty good yeah. shots, aren't they? Those yeah. are amazing. I mean, yeah. Those are some of my favorite ones. Yeah, well, uh, that's a special launch. I mean, if you can get those uh, on the West Coast, if you can get a sunset launch, and on the East Coast, if you can get a sunrise launch, where the sun is below the horizon. So what happens is the rocket, again, we can get to this picture. Oh, that's actually at landing. That's the landing burn from about... 600 miles away. That is the rocket landing wow. going into the clouds. You're 600 miles away? Yes. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. Um, so anyways, like here, like you see how uh, when it got up to about this point, you can see how it started radiating light. That's because it's being hit by the sun because it's so high up in the atmosphere that it's being hit by the sun, but we're in shadow. So we're at night or we're in twilight the rocket's being hit by light, so that's why it's just very special at that time. Because you're getting that, you know, basically the, the rocket is illuminated, but yet you're in shadow. Wow. So, Amazing stuff. Very Amazing. cool. All right. We just have a few minutes left. We're going to take a short pause. When we come back, we're going to talk more about all this crazy stuff. Yeah. And crazy. Uh, wow, Eric, I'm, I'm really impressed. Those Thanks. last some, Those last shots, some of those, those are some of my favorites. Those oh, are, thank you. Those are awesome. Stick around. We'll be right back with uh, Jeff and Eric. Imagine if someone took the same photographic techniques and principles and tools used by today's top pro photographers, but they applied those same techniques to shooting with the iPhone. Imagine the type of images that you'd be able to create using those same ideas. Well, that's exactly what I did in my brand new book. It's called the iPhone Photography Book. You're gonna learn exactly what the pros use to create those incredible images. And, and when people see your shots with the iPhone, they're gonna go, I cannot believe you took these with your phone. 
But with the quality of the iPhone's camera and what they're doing with the iPhone software, you can absolutely take amazing pictures. In the book, I leave all the techno speak out and instead I treat the whole book as if it were just you and I out on a shoot together, just you and me with our iPhones. And I'm there for just one reason, to help you unlock the power of your iPhone so that you make pictures that when your friends and family look at it, they go, wait, you took this? That's what the whole book's about. You'll learn which tools to use to make pro quality portraits in any lighting situation. You're gonna learn how to create stunning landscape shots that will make people swear that you took that with an expensive DSLR or a mirrorless camera. You're gonna learn proving posing techniques that flatter your subject and make anyone you photograph look their very best in every shot. You're gonna learn how to organize, how to edit your photos like a pro, and you're gonna learn the pro's tips for making amazing shots of everything from flowers to product shots, from food photography to travel and everything in between. And if you're ready to start taking these pro level shots that blow people's mind, then this is the book for you. It's in print and all the ebook formats and you can get it directly from the publisher at rockynook.com or you can pick up your copy wherever fine, fine books are sold. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're back, Scott and Eric and Jeff here. We're just chatting about all kinds of stuff. Uh, just uh, want to mention, so we do have the outdoor conference coming up in three weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you can join us. Mr. Kuna will be teaching some of his <coughs> Milky Way magic. Yeah, we're actually, we're going to teach some cool stuff. I mean, we've got a, uh, I'm really excited about there. We're going to talk about astrophotography from your own backyard and how that's possible no matter where you live. It is. Eric got shots that you would swear he drove three hours to get. And he's like, yep. that's in my backyard. I'm like, because we don't live in, a, in an area that has terrible light pollution. Terrible, terrible light pollution here. And he still has a way to, to get Milky Way shots. It's, that's kind of nuts. Yeah. All right. Jeff, are you. I, I was just going to ask the. I was just in Zion National Park and I was mentioning this to Eric before we started. Uh, I was struggling with star photos, star right. night photos. So. I'm very intrigued with this conference. So Eric, you're gonna tell people about the art of shooting stars. Yes, yes, I, well, that's, I, I, while rockets is, is my, my, well, maybe my thing, uh, stars and astrophotography and Milky Way is really my passion. So I love that. Anytime I can get to a night launch too, that's kind of the thing, you know? I love okay, the and then launches. Scott, Scott just did the iPhone photography book, and I was trying to do night shot of stars as well as on my SLR, and those were really bad. Scott, have you tried shooting stars on the iPhone? I have not. My my first thought is if it's going to be stars. So Eric is the guy that taught me how to shoot stars. But I'll say this: he has a recipe, and it works. Like the first time we did it, I was like, "Holy cow!" <laughs> he did. I, was, he, I, I remember. Was, I remember, and I love that experience. I love that when when you first saw it, and you're like, "Whoa, what just happened?" It was that. It was like, turn on these settings, boo this, and then it lit up at that end, and it was like, wow. And he does. He's got a recipe, and it works. You just dial it into the camera. You just, And it's not some hard recipe, but it's just, it's a very specific. And I think what is weird about it is it's not, the recipe it does not make sense in that if you've tried to sense it, figure it out, oh, it's the Milky Way. I got to leave my camera open for two and a half minutes and all these different things. It's just not that. And that's why I think people have a hard time with the Milky Way because it's not what your mind would think how to shoot yeah. it. It's a very specific, very different thing, but it works. It works. First time I did it, I was like, holy cow. Well, and to Jefferson's point, I think when you're out in places like that, uh, mixing like, um, you know, when you're in a town, it's been very hard dealing with light pollution. Um, you know, the iPhones are just not good at this yet. Uh, now, Android phones actually will handle this a lot better, the, the astrophotography stuff, well, certain uh, Android phones. Uh, but the iPhone's okay at it, but it's still but, but nowhere close to you know that Apple, to where in their selling, are. in the selling of the iPhone and the new one, they talked about how you could do night photography. They talked about how yes, you could yes. do it 30, okay. 30 seconds exposure. Night right? photography, yeah. yes. Yes. Low light photography, yes. Milky Way. Milky Way. Well, I think that's the, astrophotography. I think the the problem there is, you know, one, uh, the camera has to be super still, and then has to be open for a long period of time, and then removing that noise that that small sensor is going to create. And there are apps that can do that on your phone, but um, they still just aren't there yet. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you know, what, I think every my time... my biggest mistake 
which was I had it on the tripod and I was on 30 second, 30 second exposure, yep. and I would click the uh, the shutter button, and that ruined yeah. everything. Yeah, oh, My that's finger. a good tip. I actually I uh, should have I should have done timer. So. Right? Um, not even timer, there's a little, and I think your wife bought one of these yep. after she saw me using it. It was just, it's a Bluetooth uh, no, little you're, remote. You're talking about a regular Small, DSLR like, though, right? Or, yeah. or mirrorless. You were no, talking. I'm talking about the iPhone. The iPhone. Oh, I'm on about the, the iPhone. And oh, this little, right. little device, right? And it's like $9, a little one, Bluetooth yeah. device. And you just, it's something you put in your pocket and you turn it on and that's what becomes your shutter release. And that's it, because that's how I think w with the iPhone. If you treat the iPhone like it's a DSLR or like it's a mirrorless, it will make great images. If you treat it like a phone, it won't make great images. Yeah, but it makes yeah. great calls. It does. Crystal clear. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. It does. Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, it depends. It depends on who your carrier. Carrier. Is. Yeah. Like, but yeah, that that Bluetooth remote. That's what you need. Yep, I've got it. Yeah, just it's that little bucks. bit of shake that you're introducing there. Forget it. Yeah. All right. We have some giveaways today. We actually are giving away some cool stuff, including something yeah. that Jefferson mentioned a little while ago. Yeah, the Platypod. Is, we're giving away a Platypod Ultra. And so this thing is just a wonder, and everybody's got one. If you haven't, maybe you'll win one today. But you basically, you put a ball head on this. It's super lightweight. It literally fits in your shirt pocket. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that because I carry mine sometimes in my shirt pocket. You screw on a ball head, you put your camera on it, and you can put your camera in angles and places you would never, ever get your... Now, can I tell you phone. something else? Yes. We talked about a, a, the rapid strap um, earlier. Yeah. The one thing that you do that I think is really cool is that you'll take a platypod, put the ball head on it, put your camera on it, and then attach your strap to the, to platypod. the platypod. Yep. So then that way Scott always has a platypod and a camera, like he could just unscrew the uh, the rapid strap, and he's right shooting. Five the seconds, pod. and I'm ready to go. It's like it's like you, it actually works really well. It works shockingly yes. well. Hey, also look what I just got. Now we're not giving this away, so don't get excited. But uh, hood, and I've been talking about Hoodman's for forever. Yeah, I just got this new one. This is the latest version. So what a Hoodman does, and and I have one right here, is it covers your screen when you're shooting outside in the day. It doesn't magnify it, but it does something that I don't understand how this works, but this is what it is. If you were to take your DSLR, let's say this is my camera, and you held, held it like up to your eye, this close, everything's just a blurry mess, right? But if you put, a, if you put this over your eye, it's like you're looking at a big screen TV at night. And you yeah. could be in the middle of the day with it. Anyway, this is their latest one. It, it doesn't magnify. And I think that's what throws people off. It's not because it's called a loop. It's not designed <coughs> to make it bigger. Nope. It's yeah. designed to make it dark and crisp and clear. And it's very clear. Very it clear. Is deadly clear. And it has a diopter. I used, so you can I tune it into your um, eye. Sun and Fun uh, just a couple weeks ago at the air show. It is, it is a savior for an air show. It because is. Because you're always in the middle of the day. Yep shooting yes. in the bright light yes. and then you can never see oh did i pan really good or am i panning and then sometimes you don't want to see it because then you're embarrassed by your panning but that, it's great for it it's all great right for it. next show i will let you use my new one it's <laughs> new and improved but their stuff is phenomenal oh, it's, a, it's, it's great, great quality stuff yep. and i also got this so this is the the link and what it does is it allows you to attach it to your belt so it's you can, mm -hmm. I wear mine around my neck and, I, and people always think I'm trying to be like Hollywood, you know, like, are you a director? And I'm like, well, yeah, sure I am. But I'm not, I'm, I, I, you can hang it no, from your belt. I just, I just really bad at focus sometimes. So really bad at seeing the back of my screen in the sun. It's also perfect for photo walks. Oh yeah. You're out in the middle yeah. of the day, you're walking around, you want to see, is it, cause one of the things that I want to check mostly, is it in focus? I yep, want to check. That's, that's the, the biggest thing that I do is when I'm out there, I, I assign the back button on my camera to be a 50% zoom. So it's going to take me to not one to one, but really zoom in so I can check sharpness. When I'm in a photo walk and I'm standing right there, if I get a good shot, everything looks good on a three inch screen. Uh, absolutely. Right? Jefferson, how many times have you had your heart broken where you take a shot and you knew this is the one? I nailed it. And then you open it on your computer and you're like, it's soft. It's the, like, um, oh. the star photo that I did on the iPhone <laughs> in one. Zion that I thought was great. 
and I posted it on Instagram, and immediately I got a comment. They said, iPhone photo. I said, how do you know? They said, because it's so out of focus. And I didn't know. On the iPhone, it looked great. And then on the computer, I was so embarrassed. I, I deleted it immediately. Well, do you know that there, there are secret settings that Mr. Kuna can tell you? Well, I think for air. that, you, you know, you do, you do. The iPhone has a limitation there, and you got to get a third-party app that will allow you to to push the focus to infinity and not have it focus on the foreground. Yeah. No, and th beyond. This was, this was camera shake. Yeah, I and I think that's what it, I think it, what it comes down to is that, is when you're touching the camera, that, 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 that just that little bit of movement is going to cause all that blur. Yeah. Now, the, the iPhone does have a timer. Timer. And you can't do a But it's second. even better with the wireless because you I can know. set it up and it can be still for like a minute. So that way, because even you know when you like yep. you adjust the camera, even that 10 seconds, it, it, th it's still movement. wobbling. Yeah. If you can kind of walk away. And the other thing, too, is if you can't be standing near it, because people don't even realize, like, I'm that crazy about it. Like, I won't be near the camera while it's taking exposures, because even me walking on the ground will shake. It will shake. All right. I've got another tip. I know we're out of time. But Jefferson, I got a tip for you. Ready? You're going to love this. Yeah. Jefferson, mm -hmm. do you have an Apple Watch? I mm. do. Do you Good know one. that you can fire your camera from Good your one. Apple Watch? Yep. If you go on your, your, your camera or your iPhone? Your iPhone. Sorry, your iPhone. Yeah. You go to the camera app on your watch, and you can. it's got a shutter yep. and a true. preview, and you can fire without touching your phone. Right. You don't even need to go buy Eric's That's $10 true. thing. That's true. And not only that, it does give you the preview. Which and it nice. gives you the preview so you can see. So the idea behind that is you could put your, your camera someplace. Maybe it's hard to get to, you know, that's out of the way. But you can still see, like, if you're waiting for someone to walk by a wall or something, you know. Like, I did that in Venice Beach. I did a Jay Maisel. I found a colorful wall, and I just sat there and waited for people to walk in front of the wall and get interesting shots like that. Yeah. And if I, if I wasn't so lazy, I could go find that, it and show that, you. That is a great tip. And it's a great tip for even for DSLR and mirrorless users of using some kind of remote to trigger cameras. Like you set up a frame, and especially if you're looking for that shot, you're just kind of sometimes waiting. Yep. And just okay. being able so to Eric, wait. Eric, let, let, me, let me ask Eric one, one question here. So when you're shooting your stars, you're not using a shutter release because you're not standing by the camera. So how are you trigger, triggering your, your oh, Canon? Wireless shutter release. So wireless. Yeah, he's I actually use a MyOps. Age. That's what I use, a MyOps. But he's everything's wireless. I don't want to be near the camera. I don't want to be no shake, no nothing. I am just kind of at a distance Yep. letting it go. Because any little bit of shake. And then, then, then the other thing is I'm kind of crazy because I'll kind of uh, it's mirror lockup. But you don't have to worry about that because you sued Sony. But us who have old DSLRs, we got a mirror lockup okay. and then wait. But can I tell you something about mirror lockup on Zonies? That if you use the self timer, it automatically invokes on a Sony. It's just not, not on Canon, not on Nikon. On Sony, the self timer invokes mirror lockup. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about that on a mirrorless. Well, no, if you have a mirrorless, that doesn't That's matter. What I'm saying. There is no a, mirror. A but if you're mirrorless. on a regular Sony, like an A99 or something. Yeah. 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 One of those other ones, the, the timer automatically invokes it. But if you have a mirrorless, you don't have to worry about the mirror. I know. Know. Yeah. I wish I didn't have to worry about the mirror. You know what we have to worry about? We're over by three minutes and 23 yes. seconds, and the network gets so upset. So, uh, Jefferson, where can people go learn more about you and your photography and what you're doing? Okay. Website, jeffersongram.net. Watch photo walks on Tubi, T-U-B-I dot TV. Uh, check out my L.A. class on all the best spots in LA, right here on Kelby One. And uh, uh, gosh, I, I, and sign up for my newsletter. I'd love you to all read it. It's uh, at jeffersongram.substack.com. And I've got links to everything on my website. So we can just go to your website and there's links to sign up for the newsletter there? Yeah. All right, great. And you're on Instagram? I am, Twitter. at Jefferson Graham, Instagram and Twitter. All right. Eric, where can people go learn more about you? And if there is anything more about that you, they don't already know. <laughs> if they don't know, I mean, you can go to uh, and just uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. It's just Eric Kuna, E-R-I-K-K-U-N-A. That'll keep you up to date with what I'm doing. So. But aren't there many Eric Kunas? Uh, not with K's. I, I, was, um, I was fortunate enough that my parents did the E-R-I-K thing. And uh. then... Um, the Kuna name is not that popular. It so. is a shame because it's a Kuna. Cool K-U-N-A. All right. 
Well, thank you, Jefferson. Thank you for joining us today. And look, there's there's Eric's cool shot right there on screen. Scroll yeah. up a little. It's that oh, the middle one. I'm telling you, that's a that's an incredible it, it shot. It almost it's definitely very sci-fi like it, it but it's reality. It's that actually happened. Wow. So that's cool. Yeah. The people at Supercluster got to be like, <laughs> yeah, they love it. how do we found this yeah. guy down there yeah, in Florida? It. Anyway, so. thank you, Jeff, for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time. You are an awesome Thanks guy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. This was fun. Thanks yeah, to our sponsors. Do we have to announce the prizes? Yeah. We do have to announce Ooh. the prizes. Let's wait, do prizes wait, 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 wait. Let's go. Prizes. So we got uh, John Unser has won the Boris FX uh, Optics. Congratulations, then we got John. Uh, Judy Comer is one your iPhone book says so exciting inspire to get out there and then Mike Regis is one the platypod ultra so um, just email us at grit prize at kelby one.com we'll verify your information and we'll get you your prize how cool there you go well thanks everybody thanks to Eric thanks to my crew here Christina yeah. Juan Jason Ron the whole crew here and we'll see you guys we have special guests next week don't we we do have a special guest next week as well all right, yes. we got a great guest coming in next week, so make sure you join us. We're having a lot of fun. Take care, stay safe. We'll catch you guys next Wednesday. Imagine if someone took the same photographic techniques and principles and tools used by today's top pro photographers, but they applied those same techniques to shooting with the iPhone. Imagine the type of images that you'd be able to create using those same ideas. Well, that's exactly what I did in my brand new book. It's called the iPhone Photography Book. You're going to learn exactly what the pros use to create those incredible images. And, and when people see your shots with the iPhone, they're going to go, I cannot believe you took these with your phone. But with the quality of the iPhone's camera and what they're doing with the iPhone software, you can absolutely take amazing pictures. In the book, I leave all the techno speak out and instead I treat the whole book as if it were just you and I out on a shoot together, just you and me with our iPhones. And I'm there for just one reason, to help you unlock the power of your iPhone so that you make pictures that when your friends and family look at it, they go, wait, you took this? That's what the whole book's about. You'll learn which tools to use to make pro quality portraits in any lighting situation. You're gonna learn how to create stunning landscape shots that will make people swear that you took that with an expensive DSLR or a mirrorless camera. You're gonna learn proving posing techniques that flatter your subject and make anyone you photograph look their very best in every shot. You're gonna learn how to organize, how to edit your photos like a pro, and you're gonna learn the pro's tips for making amazing shots of everything from flowers to product shots, from food photography to travel and everything in between. And if you're ready to start taking these pro level shots that blow people's mind, then this is the book for you. It's in print and all the ebook formats and you can get it directly from the publisher at rockynook.com or you can pick up your copy wherever fine, fine books are sold. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon.